Wrestling fans, this is Dean Gordon coming to you with Professional Wrestling from Florida's All-Star Wrestling Extravaganza number 9 from SCS Stadium in Miami, Florida. Our first match is going to feature Fortaleza against the Murder Clan Mafia. And you see the wrestlers have made their entrances. Ed Franklin calling for the bell, and this match is underway now. El Moco Loco of Fortaleza in the ring right now against Rotten Ronnie of the Murder Clan Mafia. You see Theo Abuelo standing on the apron. The tag team partner of El Moco Loco. There's Joker 08 on the apron for his team in his corner. This match has no disqualifications, no canouts, and it has a 30-minute time limit. Last time we saw Fortaleza teamed up, it was a big upset win over Syndicate. They are hoping to continue that trend, and hopefully, well, they're hoping to work their way up to a tag team title shot against the Soviet top team or whomever the champions may be. Big Texas jab combo there by Dio Abuelo on Rotten Ronnie. Look at the agility for the, uh, for the veteran there, for the older gentleman, Dio Abuelo. Do not let the gray hair fool you. Don't let the build fool you either. This man is a veteran wrestler. Great, uh, great uh, technician in, in his younger days. And he has not lost everything yet. Nice low drop kick right there by Joker 08. He and Rotten Ronnie. They're hoping to move up in the ranks as well in the tag team division. They're also going to be entered into the big death match tournament that's coming up at All-Star Wrestling Extravaganza 11. Well, Moco Loco tried to get an advantage, but Joker 08, low blow to his advantage. And uh, this card, sponsored by Jumbo Mart, All-Star Wrestling Extravaganza 9... Sponsored by Jumbo Mart, as you see there, the ring logo. Six big matches are lined up for this card. The main event, of course, is going to be the PWF Cruiserweight title match. That is going to be fantastic. Between San Francisco and the reigning champion Rex. 
in this opening matchup this one here is a good one so far 30 minute time limit tag team action no disqualifications no candidates and one would think that would favor the murder clan mafia as they love using weapons they love using these underhanded tactics Nice counter there by Rotten Ronnie is uh, so far six minutes into this match. I'm not sure if there's a real clear um, domination yet or a real clear advantage for either team. MCM did hit a couple of uh, double team moves now. I'm sure that will help them. Dio Abuelo is dazed. Oh, but he missed. Look at that. Joker 08 missed with that Lariat attempt. As El Moco Loco is tagged back in. Joker 08 fighting out there. Nailing the back diving elbow. He's going for it again. Nice leg spin there by El Moco Loco. Joker 08 going up and he connects with the Baka Chinga elbow. Once again, using that torture half crab, but Dio Abuelo is in to make the save. Oh, look at that rolling pinfall, but Joker out before one. Fans starting to react now. Both teams using good continuity, making frequent tags. Dio Abuelo's in the wrong corner. And here we go. There's a bat in the hand of Rotten Ronnie. Big swing and a miss. Dio Abuelo, let's see what he can do. Nice move there, twisting on that leg and dropping a knee on it. Spinning toe hold. Classic move there, popularized by the Funk Brothers. Oh, look at that move right there. Beautiful head scissors. Nice move there by Rotten Ronnie to escape. Now he's got the bat in hand again. Unable to use it though as he's forced to lock up with El Moco Loco. You know Rotten Ronnie is just looking for a chance to use that bat, but thinking better of it, he makes a tag to his partner. Airplane spin. Joker breaking that up. Nice counter to the headlock there by Joker 08, lifting him up for that backdrop. Iron Claw. Uh, Loco Loco able to get away as all four men are in the ring now. For Karana, will no, not even a one can Joker, just way too fresh. Nice double drop kick right there by Fortaleza. Joker certainly showing his craftiness and resilience in this match. Up quickly, even though uh, moves make connect, he's up quickly. He's still uh, very fresh in this matchup. It would seem at this point, Fortaleza are a little more worn out. They've been taking some higher damage offense. That will take its toll over time. And look at that. A shot from behind. Rotten Ronnie now celebrating. And he, yes, he has that bat in hand. Oh, look at that. He evaded Theo Abuelo and then... A shot over the head. Dio Abuelo is down. Rotten Ronnie is just loading. Back with that baseball bat. Ooh, and a nice shot to the ribs right there. 
one has to wonder how much Theo Abuelo has in his tank after taking those shots. And he is slowly heading over to his corner to make a tag into his partner. Nice move right there, the spinning heel kick and the leg sweep, but Rotten Ronnie is up to 4-1. He and Joker are still very fresh. Joker now, he has the bat in hand. Missing with the uh, shot to the ribs with the butt end of the handle. Nice block by a Loco Loco, and there we go. A Tai Chi style Gato clutch. But in the ropes. Okay, oh. Nice try, Aboko Loco, but he, but Joker's not the legal man anymore. Oh, look at that big headbutt right there. The Kosheki headbutt. Rodden Ronnie going up. Beautiful five-star frog splash right there. Aboko Loco is still down. He is hurting. Making the tag, and he is in trouble. Smart move to make the tag. Technical leg spin is uh, Dio Abuelo now going for a camel clutch. But Rotten Ronnie, he's fresh. He got out of it. Now making the tag. And it just seems in this matchup, even though Dio Abuelo and El Mucoloco have hit some offensive moves, their offense just doesn't seem to be as high impact as the offense of the Murder Time Mafia. And of course, using the baseball bat on numerous occasions have certainly helped the MCM with what I believe is their advantage in this match. A 30 minute time limit, we are nearing 19 and a half minutes. And now he's setting up for something, it looks like he's going to go for a little worm. the strike exchange as we have passed the 20 minute mark. Big striking lariat by Dio Abuelo making the much needed tag. Now let's see if El Moco Loco can uh, ride some momentum in the ropes. That's a rope break. Beautiful dragon screw right there. El Moco Loco is going up and yes a moonsault. He's going for the cover. The pin. Just a one count on Rotten Ronnie. Some nice offense right there, though, by El Moco Loco. Another back of Jenga elbow by Joker 08 into an iron claw hold, and it is over. Your winners at 21 minutes and 45 seconds. Thanks to that iron claw, the Murder Clan Mafia. Joker is still holding that uh, claw. The referee's got to get in there. Folks, stay tuned for our next matchup. Greetings, wrestling fans. This is Dean Gordon welcoming you back to our second matchup, All-Star Wrestling Extravaganza number 9. This is going to feature another no-disqualification tag match, the Monster Army versus the Wild Cards.
And here we go. Joe McKinney is ready to start this matchup now. No disqualification. 30-minute time limit. Tag team match between the Monster Army. The tag team combination of Red Plague and Jason V. And the wild cards consisting of Texas Ted and Duke Diesel. And for those of you that remember All-Star Wrestling Extravaganza 8, it was Duke Diesel that actually picked up the win against Jason V in less than 10 minutes. A bit of a surprise there, to be honest. And then Red Plague, uh, another little bit of surprise. He did not come out with his Gold Coast TV title belt. Have to ask him backstage after the uh, match why he didn't do that. Maybe because the title's not on the line, he didn't feel the need to carry it out. Uh, from past conversations with Red Plague, it has, it's been made abundantly clear he doesn't care about titles themselves. He just likes the symbolism, and he likes knowing that as a champion, challengers come to him, so it makes his hunting easier. Red Plague just loves to dish out pain and suffering on his opponents. Jason V loves to dish out pain and suffering on his opponents. And while Jason V has been pinned and submitted before, Red Plague has not been beaten in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and Red Plague in tag team action still has not been pinned or submitted. The Monster Army have lost in the past, most notably to the Soviet top team, our current PWF tag team champions. Jason V, he stood strong, uh, sorry, uh, Duke Diesel rather, he stood strong against Jason V on a couple of occasions and beat him in their last match. And so we'll see if he and Texas Ted, if they're able to uh, overcome the Monster Army. The Wild Cards wanting to uh, be recognized as a tag team, wanting to be recognized as tough competitors. Nice uppercut there by Texas Ted. He's tougher than a $2 steak. But look at the strength and the power of Red Plague. Texas Ted is a big man and he hoisted him up with ease. Tag made now to Duke Diesel. Double team coming with the double lariat. A nice counter right there by Red Plague and a big headbutt as he's being forced to leave the ring now. Same thing with, well, one of the members of the Wildcards. There we go, Texas Ted forced out of the ring. There are no disqualifications, but this match is not a tornado matchup. Duke Diesel missing with that uh, big boot attempt. Nice back elbow though, Jason V, he's down, let's see how long he'll stay down. Jason V now, no, look at that, Duke Diesel, once again, I mean, Duke Diesel is not intimidated of either of these men, and it certainly has to help him mentally, knowing that he beat Jason V in the past. Big boot right there by Red Plague. Duke Diesel, he and Texas Ted, they don't have reputations as monsters, but they do have reputations as rugged men who love a good brawl. You're not going to see any pretty moves from them. You're not going to see any fancy aerial work. You're not going to see uh, well-polished submissions or well-crafted strikes with precision. You're just going to see rough bunkhouse brawling. Duke Diesel's three favorite hobbies are riding his bike, drinking beer, and getting into bar brawls. Here we go, barbed wire baseball bat. The butt end of that bat rammed into the stomach. Duke Diesel now with a chair rammed into the ribs. Front face pile driver nicely done there by Red Plague as both Jason and Texas Ted are brawling in the ring. And now there's Duke Diesel with the weapon on Red Plague. Duke Diesel taking it 
to look at those headbutts there while on in the ring. Jason V is taken at the Texas Tech. We have passed the 10 minute mark. Both men on the edge side, there are no count outs, so the referee, he can't do anything to force them in. And Duke Diesel's getting the advantage there on Red Plague. Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at that big press slam there. Front press slam by Red Plague. As he hit Duke Diesel in the stomach with a chair, Duke Diesel coming right back. Now he makes his way back into the ring. Duke Diesel making the save for his team right there. And look at that show of power again. And there's an uppercut there to the back of the head of Red Plague. He dropped Duke Diesel. He went down and now Texas Tech grinding that elbow into the side of Red Plague's head. Duke Diesel has Jason in the corner, sets him up in the tree of woe, kicking away now with the abdomen. While Texas Tech dropping those big elbows, the wild cards certainly are wild in this matchup. Nice jumping lariat by Texas Ted. Red Plague forced to make a tag as another uppercut connects. And Red Plague is dazed. Now we have the Monster Army coming back. Nice power bomb neckbreaker combo onto Duke Diesel. Jason V would love to get some revenge there. Knee to the stomach, Duke Diesel flipped over. Both men now trading heavy bombs. Let's see who gets the best of this strike exchange. And look at that, Duke Diesel full of adrenaline, headbutting the hockey mask, but not feeling it. I'm sure he'll feel it though later on after this match has ended, but right now the adrenaline just pumping. Both men go down from that impact. Texas Ted now, let's see what he can set up with. He can't as Jason V now with a weapon. And it looks like Texas Ted is bleeding. Oh, there's a code red on to Duke Diesel. He's not the legal man, but that surely did damage. Duke Diesel now heading back onto the apron. Red flight back onto the, to the apron. Jason V with those uh, multiple headbutts. Nice move right there by Jason V. Another Lariat. Reversal coming up, yes. Reverse the Brain Buster attempt. He's in the ropes, it's not going to count. Now back inside the ring, Duke Diesel comes back outside. As Red Plague is dazed on the outside. All four men brawling again. Red Plague and Texas Ted are the legal men. Double team coming up on Jason V. Yes, a double power bomb. Front lay eight suplex right there. Max Guillotine Driver finds its mark onto Texas Ted as the tag is made. Duke Diesel fighting out of the double team attempt. Both of these teams, their heels, so some fans are going to boo them. Another lay eight front suplex, nicely done by Texas Ted, and multiple headbutts again. Look at that, Tech Duke Diesel is dead. But as soon as he's picked back up, he comes back with an eye rake and a punch. And another big knee to the abdomen, Jason coming off the ropes, and a headbutt there. Texas Ted making it safe for his team there. As that kind of weapon attack could prompt a submission in this no disqualification environment. That breaker power bomb combo again, Texas Ted. All oh, giant steel knuckles. They find the mark. Let's see if he can get the pinfall. Red Plague, he broke that one up. Short arm clothesline there. Nicely done by Texas Ted. 
as we are nearing the 20 minute mark. Time will tell now, Jason V is able to, to uh, take advantage of that attack. Another big lariat. Duke Diesel fighting out, both men are making tags. Press slam, beautifully done. Mike's guillotine driver, let's see if he'll go for the pin. Electric chair drop, dangles Texas Ted. And Texas Ted comes back, wins that exchange. Nice low blow like right there. It looked like uh, Red Flake may have been going for the code red. Texas Ted got out of it, but now he found himself the victim of a low blow. Making the cut worse there. Texas Ted with some shots to the top of the skull. There's another low blow. And once again, Jason finding himself hit repeatedly below the belt, but yet he is continuing on another big lariat. And there you hear the boos. They were booing Duke Diesel earlier. They were just booing Jason V that time. Nice sledgehammer right there. The fans may not necessarily like these teams, but they are certainly fans of a good fight. And this is what we are seeing in this matchup. A good, hard brawl. 30 minute time limit. We are getting close. Only uh, four and a half minutes, five and a half minutes left. One of these two teams have got to hit something big. Big boot right there, will he? Yes, he's going for the pin. Oh, and Texas Ted made the save. Jason couldn't get there in time to cut him off. Now let's see if Duke Diesel can uh, do something. Texas Ted coming back in. He's been tagged. Rodeo stretch coming up, will this? And that will end it for the first time in PWF. Red Plague has been forced to submit 25-50 for the winners of this matchup. The Wild Cards, big win here. Folks, stay tuned for the next match. Greetings fans, this is Dean Gordon, and welcome back to All-Star Wrestling Extravaganza 9, presented by Professional Wrestling from Florida and the Jumbo Mart.
And here we go now, folks. Ed Franklin is set now to ring the bell for our next matchup. 30 minute time limit. Disqualifications and can outs are in effect. And the two teams involved are the Power Squad, consisting of Mr. Amazing and Daisuke Nishimoto, against the team of Style S, consisting of Hiro Kazafuji, who's on the apron, and in the ring now, our Florida State Heavyweight Champion, Bob Anuki. And right now, Mr. Amazing is having the advantage early, early in this match. Baba Nuki has taken on both Mr. Amazing and Daishiki Nishimoto in one-on-one -on -one action, defending the Florida State Heavyweight title, and has defeated them both. But let's see if Power Squad, as a team, can do something. Kazafuji now tagged in. Hiro Kazafuji has been impressive on his own as of late as well, growing as a wrestler. The Gotch Lion is his nickname, using the Gotch Special as his uh, signature move, his favorite move to end the match. Nice snap there. Drop toe hold and a beauty. Right now, good defense being shown by Hiro Kazafuji, but. Nishimoto using that strength of his. 5 foot 11, around 260 pounds, a very thick individual. A couple of hip tosses there by Kazafuji. Executed nicely. Oh, butterfly neck lock. Nice move there by Nishimoto, but Kazafuji was able to get a get out of there and now he tags in his partner Baba Nuki and Mr. Amazing was tagged in connects with a big football tackle and a muscle bomb press but Hero is not a legal man Mr. Amazing now trying to set his sights on our heavyweight champion the Florida State heavyweight champion Baba Nuki Baba Nuki has just been a, a great champion representing the state of Florida Big slap right there. And there, look at the strength in that stalling brain buster by Mr. Amazing. While you would have to consider Baba Nuki as, uh, as being the favorite here to win this match, the Power Squad as a team are quite effective. It would not be surprising if they were able to win. Baba Nookie is a, you know, he's our singles champion. We'll see if uh, he and uh, Kazafuji can work well as a team. Prison lock, nice move there. And looking at these four men, for a potential weak link, maybe Hiro Kazafuji because of his youth. But all four of these men certainly are good wrestlers. And this match is certainly evenly matched. This one could go either way. And with the 30 minute time limit, this one, it wouldn't surprise me if it did end up in a draw with the 30 minute time limit. It certainly is possible because all four of these men are just great competitors. Nice defense there by Kazafuji. He has been showing good defense and a big knee drop to the abdomen there on Nishimoto. Irish whip. And takes him down with the Waki Gatame. Mr. Amazing able to escape though. 
Mr. Amazing coming off with the Muscle Bomb Press. Oh, two count. Look at that. Kaiser Fuji is getting out of there now. Nice move by Mr. Amazing to fight out of that one. Two big solid kicks. But a gut wrench suplex by Baba Nookie sends Mr. Amazing down. Oh, turnbuckle power bomb. That was brutal right there. Baba Nookie is fortunate that Nishimoto is not really able to follow up too well, but there's a heel hold or an ankle lock. Kazafuji is in, and there's a rolling reverse cross knee breaker. Nishimoto able to make his escape, and now going for a stretch plumb. Jumping brain buster, and there's a chicken wing arm lock. Nice counter with the roll up, let's see. 2K, Mr. Amazing makes the save, now Nishimoto back to the prison lock. And these two men now are trading submissions just to see who will break down first. Kazafuji in to make a save there. Mr. Amazing making him pay for that with the big rip breaker. Here we got two submissions in the ring now, the Manji Katame and a modified sharpshooter. One would think that with all these submissions, it's only going to be a matter of time before something breaks. Back again, that top rope knee drop right into the abdomen. Oh, he missed that one. Mr. Amazing may have messed up his trajectory. Irish whip. Dragon Sleeper now applied by Hiro Kazafuji. Let's see, Mr. Amazing fights his way out of it. Missing with that lariat. Uh, Hiro Kazafuji unloading with some big shots right now. Let's see what he's able to follow up with. Going back to that top rope, those high risk knee drops. Nice elbow drop right there. Kazafuji is dazed. Oh, but Mr. Amazing, he missed. Kazafuji got out of the way in time. Style S unable to follow up, though. Big diving back elbow drop. And Mr. Amazing looks to make a tag into his partner, Nishimoto now, sizing up a nookie. Mr. Amazing, yeah, get back on the apron. He doesn't belong in the ring. Nishimoto and Inuki are the legal men. Save made. As Inuki had that Manji Katame. Latchlock suplex. Nice counter right there as Nishimoto looked like he was in trouble. Recovering enough to make a tag. Now look at that, just brute strength right there by Daisuke Nishimoto. Big spear coming up. Original style powerbomb, this could do it, let's see. Kazafuji late in getting into the ring and Nishimoto was able to make the save now as he applies a front neck block. And there's another modified sharpshooter. Kazafuji, though, he's in to make the save for his partner. Manji Gatame, let's see. Kazafuji's in the ring, cutting off Nishimoto, but Mr. Amazing escapes. Double underhook suplex and a beauty right there. Manji Katami onto Nishimoto. He's not the legal man. Mr. Amazing will break that up.
Look at that spear for Bob and Nookie with a boot to the head. And Nishimoto went down. And there's the Nishimoto Vice for Bob and Nookie. Oh, look at that. Bob and Nookie was in trouble, but Kazafuchi made the save. And a nice counter there for that chicken wing arm lock. Kazafuchi back in the ring. He is quick to get in. He, yeah, he's been quick to get into the save his mentor. Standing head and arm octopus right there. This amazing cut off Kazafuji because of Fuji. Whoop, there we go. Look at that. Now we got a double team. Big move coming, big impact. Missing with that uh, stepping shell tape, but he connects with the body slam, and there's a tag in once again. Got a couple of crabs in the ring, but the legal men are not involved. Nice knee to the stomach there. Will we see a lariat? No, a big boot. Nicely done. Oh, there's the amazing drop. Will he go for the cover? Yes. I don't believe it. A 2.9. I do not believe it. I thought that was the end of it right there. Kaza Fuji showing his fighting spirit. And look at that. Involved in a spirited exchange with Mr. Amazing. I am surprised Kaza Fuji is still in this match after that vicious... Vicious amazing drop, and now he comes back. Suzuki style pile driver. There's the cover. 2.9. I do not believe it. And look at that tornado slam right there. Stomach claw. Babanuki helping there. Kazafuji there. Over the shoulder arm breaker. Nicely done. Kaza Fuji with that foul, showing some respect there for Mr. Amazing. A couple of close calls in this matchup, and now look at that vicious double powerbomb. Baba Nookie sitting outside. Now all four men. It looks like, yep, yeah, all four men now outside. Nice uh, choke sleeper there, choke uh, neck, choke, uh, choke sleeper neck breaker on the outside, but look at this. Oh, that was so close. One more, and it would have been a kind of 26 minutes have passed. Less than four minutes remain. Juji Gatami, could that end it? And yes, it does. Your winners at 26 minutes, 22 seconds. The team of style last thanks to Bob and Noki and that Juji Gatami on Daisuke Nishimoto. Folks, stay tuned.